our imaginations in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that everyone here will live a life that counts for the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you so much. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, today we dealt the issue of evangelism, the issue of soul winning. And the reason why we win soul is to prepare them for heaven. And one of the places that God has chosen in preparing people for heaven is the church of God. Now, before I continue my sermon, uh, because uh, we are talking about evangelism, we are talking about soul winning, we are talking about um, uh, conserving the souls that we, are, we have won, we are talking about uh, building the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to make a quick correction. I decided to wait until now to make the correction. Are we ready? Are we ready? Yes. All right. When people come to our church, and just yesterday, you've heard the leaders, we, we met at the leadership meeting yesterday, we dealt with the same issue of evangelism, and I realized that some of the things I was correcting that is hindering the growth of the church, we still repeated it this morning, and we all need to go. Uh, and I gave the example yesterday of a particular place I went, and as I walked in there, how I was received, how the people rally around. Uh, from the beginning, after the service, the interaction, the relationship, and everything, and I told you, if I were to be somebody looking for a church, I would say, this is a place to be. Amen? And uh, today, we have a new person coming to our church from another country, and we left her to sit down alone by herself. No connection, no interaction, no engagement, we have not done well. If I were to be a new person coming to the church today, this would be my last day of coming because there is no relationship. And we correct that immediately. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I thought I had corrected that openly before, years back, but we forgot. But now we will not forget again. Because yeah. if I come again and it repeats itself, I will still talk about it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You still love your pastor? Yeah. I'm still the same person. <laughs> I have not changed. If Jesus didn't change, I have not changed. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so today, we are going to look at the situation of the church. We, in this church, have spoken about evangelism many times. We've talked about church growth so many times. We have uh, gone on the field so many times. And whether you admit or not, we've had so many people visiting our church over the years. And yesterday I was telling the workers that if we to have been able to retain just 10% of all the people visiting our church over the years, that this sanctuary wouldn't have contained them, just 10%. Just 10%. But now, where are the people? We are laboring. It's not as if we are not laboring. We are making investment. It's not as if we're not making investment. Are we doing wrong? Just like go to our media department, so that what we're doing wrong right now, they will fix it. Media department. If that continues, I will fire you. Amen. 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 Amen is just to get them to, to be sure that things are getting corrected over there. Praise the Lord. So, why is churches are not growing? 
Why are church failing? Why the church fail? That's what I'm going to talk about this morning. But I need to say that when we talk about the church, we're talking about the physical church, the congregation. We're talking about you and me here. In the body of Christ. Can you imagine the president of the government coming to speak and everything is just collapsing? That shows uh, who we are. So, why? Why church is fake? It's not because the churches does not want to grow. It's not because the pastors don't want it's not because um, everybody's sleeping. It's wrong where I'm at. Needed to be addressed and taken care of. Let me take this pause. The church of Christ cannot die. And the church of Christ will not die in Jesus' name. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, Upon this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. But then, when we talk about the church, the church is you and me. So we're going beyond just you and me. We're talking about building the church of Christ together. How do we get the church? You heard from some of our brethren that uh, gave us the pictorial uh, aspect of evangelism. Jesus made us to know, the Bible made us to know, God made us to know, the only way we can be part of the church by repenting of our sins renouncing our sins, receiving Christ into our lives, and remaining with Christ Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, from verse 18, all power is given unto me. I need to assure you that everything we need to grow the church, we have them already. I need an amen. All power is given unto me, and when Jesus said that in Matthew chapter 28, the same Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power. So the power, amen, that was given to Christ by the Father, he also in turn has given unto us. And if we understand that, and with that power Jesus built the church, established the church, and the church is still alive till today, despite the persecutions, despite the oppositions, despite the oppressions, despite all that the church age has been through, the church is still here. The Bible has been born so many times. Some have said, well, within this number of years, the Bible will be out of existence. But up to now, can I see your Bible? Can you lift it up? Amen. To the shame of the devil. To the glory of the name of the Lord. Amen. 
all power is given unto me, both in heaven and here on earth. Go ye therefore, go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things and whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. How often? Always. Until when? Until the end of the world. And the church says, Amen. Amen. The church is a living organism. And every living thing grow. But then understand, it's possible to be alive and not growing the way you ought to be. And that is where evangelism comes in. That is where following up the people that got converted comes in. I told you that the church of Christ cannot die. But the church of Christ can be limited if the members of the church fail in their duties and in their responsibilities. So, today is going to be a little lengthy, since you don't have me all the time. I need an amen. amen. Are you ready for that? Yes. Are you ready for me? Yes. Are you ready for God? Yes. Or you have to go to work? Or you have to go to work? Aha, the, the law is going down. Somebody say amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Kayode, are you by the door? Make sure nobody passed through that door. Amen? And uh, thank God, if you don't know, he's tall, he's lanky. And uh, he will not let you go. Why do we have the church? What is the purpose of the church? The church, primary purpose is to worship the Lord. To worship the Lord. The church is to see to the conversion of souls and transformation of lives. Jesus tells us again to go into the world and preach the gospel. The preaching of the gospel must be done in, in obedience to the great commission. And disobedience to the great commission is a great disobedience. And to be able to do this, we must do it with all our strength, with all our might, with all the gift, with all the grace, with all the treasure, with all the talent that we have in our lives. The purpose of the church is to give us a sense of belonging. A sense of belonging. The purpose of the church is to create an atmosphere of fellowship and participation. And I want to say that I'm impressed that we are making progress here. Amen? I will talk about innovation, and you could tell that what we did this morning is an innovation. This is not the norm. And uh, the pastor earlier on during the question and summary said, uh, uh, we are going to do something different, something special. And may I say that that thing special should not just be for one day. Amen? Amen? We should always come up with different ways of presenting the gospel of Christ. The same content, the same message, but different packaging. Different packaging. And uh, you ask uh, our sister from the Philippines, sometimes I am in the church, I am preaching, I am teaching, and I will ask for ladder. I will bring ladder into the church. Amen? What do you want to do with, what do you do with ladder? You climb. Do I climb ladder in the Philippines? I climb ladder in the church. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you bring people out just like we have done today. And then you do demonstration. Whatever we can do to build the church of Christ so that the church will continue to move on and to move forward. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And remember, the church is for fellowship. It's for participation. And it's for us to engage together. If you notice, we have 
the, the youth section, we have the young adult section, we have the adult section. Everybody must be involved. The children's section also. Everybody must be engaged in the church of Jesus Christ. The purpose of the church is to teach and to instruct Christians. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Teach them. Teach them. If you came to the church just for entertainment, then you are not ready as a member of the church of Christ. Teach them. That is the instruction. The purpose of the church is to bring Christ closer to you. And you get closer to Christ by putting a church nearer where you live. So you don't have to travel one hour, two hours, like we do in the Philippines. Every Sunday, one of our church locations, because right now, by the grace of God, uh, we have more than one church in the Philippines. <laughs> and we have more than two churches in the Philippines. And we have more than three churches. And we have more than four churches. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, we take the church to the people where they are. And every Sunday, I'll go to a place, drive one, over one hour for first service in the morning. And then, come back over one hour to join the main church. What I did there, I'm repeating over there, I put somebody in the main church, and so I run up and down. So, come to join them in the main church, and when we finish in the main church, then go to the third church. And the third church is about how many hours away? Four hours away. And then we finish there, and then we come back home. So, we leave very early, we come back in the night. Why? The people that are four hours away cannot come to where we were. People that are one and a half hours away cannot come. So what do you do? You take the church to them. We need to go to heaven to get to heaven. What did Christ did? Christ left heaven. He came to the world and brought the gospel to us. What should we do? We leave our comfort zone. We go to where the people are and take the gospel to them, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For proximity purposes, we plant the churches where the people are. And you as the missionary, you as the minister, you want to be the one making the sacrifice or sacrifices for the people. Mothers, fathers, they suffer for their children. Uh, there was a time, I read this from somewhere, uh, a child looked at the father and saw that the father's T-shirt had a hole. And every time the father wears it. So one day, the child asked the dad, because this child always have nice dress, well-dressed, Every time, go to school, go around. But the father is always having a shirt with a hole. And the son asks the father, Dad, why is it that you always have hole in your T-shirt? And the father said, Oh, son, do you have hole in your own T-shirt? He said, No, Dad. Do you have hole on your pants? No, Dad. I have holes in my T-shirt so that you can be better. You as a father, you as the mother, you make the sacrifice for the sake of the converts that they may know the Lord, love the Lord, live for, God, live for God and serve him for the rest of their life and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The purpose of the church is to challenge the lukewarm and the, uh, the cold members. And so, when we come together, we want to do things in such a way that we wake everybody up, excite everybody, make the church more interesting, more interesting. Now, look at the short uh, um, 
skit we had this morning, the sister over here was telling the one over here, you always look sad. You always, you, you don't look happy. Now, as a Christian, you want to make sure that no matter what is happening, you make yourself look happy. Amen? Amen. Because it will affect your preaching. It will affect your life. I was sharing with people yesterday, the me you see today is not the same me many years back. I don't interact with people. I thought with holiness, you just create your own kingdom. Anybody coming in will contaminate you. But I was not reaching people. I was not winning people. I was going to be like Elisha that had nobody to hand over to. But the Lord helped me. And the Lord will help you. Amen. And I prayed and things turned around. And now I realized that relating with people does not make you unholy. Amen? Amen. It actually helps your holiness and makes you a better person. So please be cheerful, sister. Be cheerful, brother. And let people be able to see the Christ in you. Let them see you always happy and then be able to say, sister, brother, I see you are always happy. You are always joyful. What is the secret of it? Can you please tell me? I've tried this, I have tried that, yet there is nothing in me that proves that I am happy. And then when they see the Christ, and then you tell them, oh, I was like you before. The secret of my joy now is Jesus. Amen? And then you present Christ unto them. And you present him with love. You present him with joy. That way, the church of Christ will continue to grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so the Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13, exhort one another daily while it is day, while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. We come to church to be able to exhort one another, challenge one another, encourage one another. We come to church to give equal opportunity to everybody, old and young, illiterate and educated people, men, women, rich and poor, so that everybody, you know the Bible says, for God so love the world. You love the Muslims. I need an amen there. Amen. You love the Buddhists. Amen. amen. You love the, um, all these uh, homosexual people, what do you call them now? The LGBTQ people, you love them. Hello? Amen. Hello? Amen. When you see them, you don't condemn them. Yes, there is condemnation, but that is not your job. You want them converted, not condemned. And so you show them love. You show them affection. You are not just criticizing them. It is when you demonstrate that love of Christ towards them. Amen? Amen. Now, because we're trying to be practical here, uh, in case she said it, but I'm going to say it now. My first daughter in the Philippines is right here with us. Amen? And openly in Nigeria, she told them that I am Pastor Dada's daughter. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And she said that to thousands of people. Amen? Amen? In the Philippines, they all know. So she's not just a worker in the church, a minister in the church, but she's a daughter in the Lord. But this is where I'm going. When she first came, if I were to look at her the way we deeper lifers look at people, handle her the way we handle people, she wouldn't be in the church today. But I did not concentrate on the way she looked. 
if you see her. <laughs> Where in the bar? <laughs> Amen. If you see her dress and everything, you say, oh my. You child of the devil. But no, no, no. You have to get to the sea, to the sea, to catch the fish. You catch the fish first before you begin to skin or to clean the fish. I need an amen. amen. And you do that with patience. You do that with love. And I can tell you there are many in the church today that are staying in the church because of love, the love of God. Let us show it to people. Let us kill this spirit of holier than thou attitude. Ah, look, at, look at how short the skirt is. That is not your job for now. Your job is show them love. Somebody say, show them love. Before you leave today, you're going to look around and see people you don't really know before. And then go to them and show them 32. What's 32? Smile. Smile. Let them see your teeth. Amen? Amen. Even if you have hole on your teeth, it will it still be 32. Somebody say amen. amen. That is lacking in the church today, especially in our environment. I mean, our church environment. And the Lord will help us to turn things around in Jesus' name. Amen. What's the purpose of the church? To counter the uprising of false religion. There is a lot of false religion out there. And unfortunately, many of these false religions, when we talk about false religion, don't look at the... Um, the Eastern religion people. No, 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 no. Don't look at the Buddhists. No, 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 no. Don't look at the Muslims. No, 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 no. Well, they in the church. False religion. And people calling upon the name of the Lord. False religion. The purpose of the church is to correct the errors in the lives of people and bring Christ to their lives. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil. So, we have more problems in the church than out there in the world. If the church can be transformed, the world will be transformed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why is the church established to meet the growing population of the world. I checked actually this morning, the population of the world is 7.951 billion. Almost 8 billion people in the world today. What is the population of the church? Just a little fraction of that. Why? Because you are not doing your part. I am not doing my part. But from now going forward, the Lord will help us to do our part in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, if the church must grow, what are the problems we first and foremost identify in the church? And when we're talking about the church, please don't look at your sister. Don't look at your brother. Don't look at your pastor. And pastor, don't look at your member. Look at yourself. It is me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but me, O Lord. So when we are talking about the church, we are talking about the redeemed of the Lord. The people that are purged from their sin. The people that are on their way to heaven. The people that are serious with their faith. Problems that collapses the church. Number one, spiritual coldness. Born again, Holy Ghost filled according to you, but in reality, somebody say in reality. in reality. If the Holy Ghost is there, the coldness will be out. 
If there is light in a place, darkness will be out. So, whatever you may be claiming that you have, maybe it's not the Holy Ghost. You have a spirit. So, what do you do is wake yourself up. Get rid of this last day syndrome. There is religion everywhere, but righteousness is lacking. God wants us to wake up. So, spiritual coldness and last day syndrome is hindering the, the church from growing. Come again to 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verse 1. These know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinence, fears, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having, read for me, verse 5. Everybody? Having a form of godliness, but... <coughs> deny the power thereof and the bible says from such turn away turn away turn away first timothy 4 1 the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith giving attention giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and seducing spirit is in most of the churches today. What is another problem? We had some of them earlier today, both our brother who taught us, and then all the other brethren that came up later on. Prayerlessness. The church is asleep. We are all combat with what we shall eat and what we shall drink. No more about preserving lives, no more about holiness and righteousness, prayerlessness. Please understand that sinners are bound by the forces and the powers of darkness. And just our preaching alone is not enough. We need the power of the Holy Spirit through prayer to be able to break through and penetrate into their heart penetrate through whatsoever is hindering them from paying attention to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Somebody say amen. amen. But mighty, somebody say mighty. Mighty, mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imagination as every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Another reason is what we are really talking about, failure to evangelize. Failure to evangelize. Many of us are too contented and why are we failing to evangelize? Because we are short-sighted or we have no vision at all. Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. Every creature. And when you are doing that, there are a few things that Jesus said there. That is in Mark chapter 16. Verses 15 to 18. Let me do a little uh, breaking down of, that, uh, uh, of those verses when he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So, mark it number one. You have to preach to everybody you meet. Every opportunity that comes away, make the best use of it. And as you preach to them, they accept Christ, the next thing you should do is get them baptized in the water. Get them baptized in the water. You know that in the time past, we, those of you that have been here for long, uh, most of you that are here now uh, are pretty new. Uh, we have sent out uh, most of those people. We used to have a window here because behind this place we have, our, we have River Jordan. 
Amen. Amen. We have River Jordan there, and that is where we do water baptism. It's still there. And so when we are doing water baptism, we open the place up, and so we do it on a Sunday, and people see us baptizing. Well, when innovations and modernizations and construction took place, we brought this place, we still do it in such a way that we capture it and then we can watch on the screen. But then I realized that for some years now, we have not done what about autism in this church. Now, if you are here today, you are born again by the grace of God. Somebody say by the grace of God. You are saved by the grace of God. Somebody say by the grace of God but you have not been baptized in the water after your conversion. Can I see your hand? Yes, God bless you. Yes, any other person? Yes, God bless you, God bless you. Okay, Pastor Charles, we have some people here that have not been baptized in the water after their conversion. Please, those of you that raise up your hand and those of you that are still trying to think about it, once you know you have not been baptized after your conversion, not the one you did before conversion. Not the one that in the Catholic they sprinkle water on you. Not the one they put finger in the, in the water and they did sign of the cross. How many times? Three times. It's always three times. That is not water baptism. Praise the Lord. I just, was it two weeks ago? We baptized up to how many people in the Philippines? 32 people were baptized in one day. <laughs> Baptize enemy in the water. Because Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen? But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now look at verse 16. Part of why the churches are not growing is we have lost our signs. Verse 17 says, And this sign shall follow them that believe. So if you really want the church to grow, you must be sure that the people are genuinely converted. Activities is not the first thing. Conversion force. Because as soon as they get converted, there is an anointing that comes upon every converted child of God. If you're here and you are born again, I can tell you that you can do miracle signs and wonders. Amen. 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 And it is real. It is real. It is real. These signs shall follow them that believe. And he said, in my name, not in your name, not in the name of your church, not in the name of your pastor. In my name, the name of Christ, you will cast out devils. Don't look at it as if it's something too impossible for you to do. Because you see somebody doing it, and then you wonder, wow, how did that happen? You can do it. Can you please turn to someone and say, you can do it. Yes. Turn to someone and say, you have the power. Yes. Okay, say it more convincingly and tell somebody, I have the power. I have the power. Cast out devils. Speak with new tongues. You know, I'm baffled that sometimes when we say, let us pray, you hardly hear people speak in tongues when we pray here in the church. I'm not talking about when you are leading people. If you are leading people and you are giving instruction, you are not speaking in tongues because that is heavenly language. But you are praying by yourself. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. Nothing stops you. From speaking in tongues. I need an amen. amen. If you don't speak in tongues, how will people know that you actually have been filled with the Holy Ghost? That anointing energizes you, helps you. 
The Spirit helps our infirmity. Sometimes you don't even know what to pray about, but when you burst into speaking in tongues, you just see yourself going on, on, and on, and on, and on. Some of you were baptized in the Holy Ghost before, but now you cannot speak in tongues because what you don't use, you will, you will lose it. It happened to me before. It happened to me before. After I got filled with the Holy Ghost, and for a long period of time, there was no exercising, there was no manifestation, there was no demonstration, and then I realized that I couldn't even speak in tongues anymore. I had to pray for it again. So, if by the grace of God, you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, Amen. the Bible says you will speak with new tongues. Amen. That new tongues is all encompassing. New tongues with the Holy Ghost baptism. New tongues where miracle signs and wonders begin to happen, and then instead of you complaining, you are giving testimony. That is also a new tongue. Amen. You were lamenting, now you are rejoicing. Amen. That is also a new tongue. A new tongue. You are always negative before, but now because of the Spirit of the living God in you, you are now positive. That is a new tongue. Amen. Amen. The Bible says you will speak with new tongues. And then it says, they shall take up serpents. That means fear will be gone from you. Hopelessness will be gone from you. And if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. Can you see when you are really genuinely converted, there is protection for you. There is preservation in your life. Don't just read these things and, 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 and rush. Look at it. What is a need for me? Now, look at this. The Bible says, you shall lay your hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. They shall recover. Just last Sunday, was it last Sunday, uh, the location, I said, like, for like four hours away, a lady was uh, sharing, because the previous Sunday, she came and said she had a problem, amen, and then right there, everybody was there, and then I prayed for her, so last Sunday, she came and said, the problem is over. Amen. You can do it. Can you please help me tell somebody again and say, you can do it. Now, I'm saying this, you know, I'm not rushing, I'm not, I'm trying to be slow and gentle with you, amen, so that you can get in everything and make, and be sure that this thing is for you, not just for some special selected people, it is for you, it is for me. I was still a very young convert, I told you this before, Amen. When somebody was pregnant for a long time, uh, this is in the early 80s, and couldn't deliver the baby and came to me, and uh, I was just an ordinary house fellowship leader. Amen? Amen. Somebody say ordinary. ordinary. Somebody say ordinary. ordinary. Amen. Amen. The Lord will make you extraordinary. Amen. 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 Just a natural person like me, and God will make you to not just be a natural, but supernatural. Amen. Tell somebody again, you can, you can do it. But you know, you know, I told you the power is there with you. The anointing is there with you. The grace is there, there with you. The word of God is there with you. The authority is there with you. Jesus is there with you. But if you don't exercise it, you will not know. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So, don't just say, I have the power, I have the power, demonstrate the power. Take risk. Somebody say, take risk. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say, take risk. take risk. You see someone who is sick and openly, and then something say, go and pray for the person. And then you say, if I pray, nothing happen. <laughs> Why don't you then say, if I, what happened then if I pray and something happened? Do you know the meaning of faith? Faith simply means risk. Amen? Amen. You take risk. I must have told you here before, 1985. Do you remember what I said happened in 1985? 
You forgot so soon? Number one, two things happened. Number one, the great miracle crusade. And I saw what God did through Pastor Kumoyi. And I was still young. I was still in my 20s. Praise the Lord. And I said, God can use me too. I don't know what you are saying to yourself. And I went to the roadside, roadside. A mad woman that I've always been seen there. Amen. Very close to my job. Openly, people were there. I went there. I grabbed her hand. I lay hands on her. I pray for her. Somebody said, Take risk. Take risk. Now the devil will tell you, if that mad woman bites you, ah, you go. Somebody said, Take risk. Take risk. Amen. For as many as received him, to them God gave the power. power. Somebody say power. power. Somebody say power. power. Somebody say, I have it. Amen. Because we are not demonstrating the power of God, so it's affecting the growth of the church. People have nothing to believe in us anymore. It's like, where is your God? Our God is alive. I said our God is alive. So do evangelism. And please understand, it is when, look at it, these signs shall, what's the next word? What's the next word? What's the next word? Follow. That means it is when you are going that something is following. If you just stand one place, you are not moving. So whatever spirit, whatever power is also stagnant, stagnated. But when you are moving, preaching the gospel, evangelizing, you will see great things happening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you know, two days ago, somebody was sharing with me that the last time I came for, what's that revival service we had? What's the title again? You still remember? Amen? And I made the altar call. And one of the people that I lay hands on, as soon as I touched the person, she started shivering. Lay hands on her, before you know it, she was on the floor. And I pray for her. Praise God. And then she was sharing with me that by the grace of God, the spirit that was tormenting her, I didn't know her before. That was my first time of seeing her. She actually saw she saw our flyer somewhere. Nobody invited her. She saw the, the flyer, and then she came. Now, she said, that spirit is in their family. And that they have an altar of Satan. But after that day, everything is over. Amen. She's a member of our church in one of the locations. It's the pastor that called me and said, uh, this person wants to talk with you. Mentioned it. I said, I don't know the person. And they now tried to describe. And so she was so excited to declare what the Lord has done. Just like our sister was saying, see what the Lord has done. You know it? See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. When things like that are happening, the church will grow. But when we don't do evangelism, we'll not see God working in us. And nothing is lack of passion. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, but when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. When you have compassion, compassion, then you forget about yourself. You will stoop low to people that are down there, and you hold their hands to bring them up. Because you have compassion. It may mean you missing your breakfast, Missing your lunch. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. It may take you out of your way. Compassion. Compassion. Compassion will continue to drive you. Continue to move you. Can I share this testimony with you? I wish I shared it in Kingston so that larger crowd can hear it. With Sister Warren working with me and seeing what God has been doing how, and how things, um, sometimes we leave home. Warren, stand up. Like what time do we leave home in the morning? And then we come back around what time? And then we have to leave at what time again? That is the way work is going on. Sometimes because of so. But and when the crusade was coming, she and another sister who is a pastor. Amen. Amen. And then she her job, she told them that we have crusade and uh, I need to take time off. And they said, sorry, we cannot give you the time off. She said, this crusade is very, very important to me. I really need to be there. And they said, well, you can go for the crusade and then we'll do whatever we want to do. You know what that means? Because they said, we are not going to give you the time, but if you want to go, we are not saying don't go, but we also will do what we have to do. And she, did, she said, thank you so much. You know what she did? She fired them. She resigned. This is somebody who just gave her life to Christ just two years plus. With this level of commitment. She didn't even come and say, hey, Pastor, I want to resign because of this. If she told me, you think I was going to tell her, resign? Amen? She said, Pastor, not a decision. Praise God. She fired them. Can we go that far with the Lord for the sake of souls? You see, crowd during the crusade, a lot were put in place. Sacrifices were made. Are you ready for the Lord? Jesus had compassion on the people. May the Lord give us the passion for souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then in the church, you know when the church is too busy with themselves by themselves, the devil will be busy with them too. And then they'll be gossiping. They'll be backbiting. And then there's going to be misuse of tongue. Competition will be there. And then we'll be fighting on non-essential. Actually, James chapter 3, verses um, 6 to 9, tells us about the use of tongue, the little member. How are you using your tongue? If you don't use your tongue to win souls, you will use your tongue to serve the devil, deceive, destroying other people. Remember, the tongue is like fire, according to the scripture there. And then we have offenses among ourselves. These are the problems that are hindering the growth of the church. We have offenses against one another. And then lack of forgiveness. We don't forgive one another. James chapter 4 verse 1 says, From whence cometh wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your laws that war in your members. <coughs> Ye lost and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because why? Ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your loss. How are you using your tongue? How are you using your life? But God wants to make a new person from out of you. Amen. God wants to build you up. God wants to bless you. Amen. 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 Somebody told me in the Philippines, I said, Pastor, you need to be careful here. They can kill you. 
that it doesn't take them time. And it's just like, pew, pew, they are gone. And that's the truth. And I say, honey, when am I not going to die? One day I will die. So I better die doing the work of the Lord. Amen? Amen. You know, last night, maybe I should say this morning, it's past 12 midnight. I, I, I saw something in the building, and so I got out to just check from outside the church building, uh, right here on uh, De La Fide, and then a car, maybe the person was even drunk, I don't even know. Almost wrong me down. The sister that was there, she's not the one that the car almost run down, but she almost passed out to herself. Amen? And she was like, <laughs> so I just tried to change the topic. Praise the Lord. And then I asked myself, if I had died just this morning, would I have been happy? This is the truth of the matter. I would have been happy. Because I have, with the opportunity and the grace of God in my life, I have devoted it for his cause and his cause alone. If death should come to you today, how will it be? How will it be? How will it be? Those of you that have been around before, I'm going to tell you again, I have two motors. Two motors. How many of you remember the motor? Thank you. Even in the Philippines, they know it already. You see her raising up her hand. That is the true daughter of the father. Amen. So I want to know those are my real children here. I see, I saw your hand, Pastor Charles. Okay, tell us. What's the number one? Not not Toyota. Okay. Okay. That is afterlife motor. Or the during life motor. Okay. Any other person? Okay. You want to help them? Okay, you tried. Put your hands together for her. My lifetime motto is living for the sake of others. Living for the sake of others. So if in the course of that I die, so let it be. My afterlife motto, which Pastor Charles mentioned, is when I die on my tombstone, please write it there, I did my best. So you want to just live your life for the Lord. Because whether you like it or not, one day you are going to die. You are going to die. So ask yourself, have I done my best for Jesus? Who has done so much for me? Why do people fight in the church? They fight because of pride, the pride of race, the, pri the pride of race, the pride of face, the pride of grace. The pride of power, the power, the pride of age. I'm older than you. I'm richer than you. I'm more educated than you. The pride of class. We are not in the same category. Thank God at least I have my own category. Amen. Amen. Disrespect for one another. My goodness. Let us respect one another. Whether you are the pastor or you are the few member. Whether you are the millionaire or you are the centenaire. Praise the Lord. Amen. We also have racism going on. Racism. Racism is dividing the church. Tribalism, dividing the church. Preferential treatment in the church. Isolation of people. We have my own team, Kakos. You don't belong here. 
We neglect one another. We neglect the needs of one another. We are insensitive to the needs of one another. We have selfishness and self-centeredness. There is betrayal. I read all those to you from Timothy, first and second Timothy already. We disappoint one another. When there is no sense of belonging in the church. I come, but nobody knows I'm coming. I don't feel belong here. Do we act or behave in such a way that people feel not belonging? Let us revisit all this. Love one another. Appreciate one another. Let us avoid prejudice. Let us avoid hypocrisy. Let us avoid judgmental spirits. And if there is sin in the camp, let us deal with it. Lack of dealing with sin will not allow the church to grow. And then there is another thing I see in the church. It is called competition, carnal competition. Carnal competition. And at other times, it's defective leadership. Defective leadership. You know, if I have my way, if you're a sectional leader here, can I see your hand up? You're a sectional leader. Can you, can you please stand up? You're a sectional leader. Sectional leader. Amen? Praise God. You know, deeper life, you know, many years back I used to work in a bank in Nigeria. And that bank happened to be number one bank that is the best when it comes to training their staff. Others follow. Deeper Life is a church that trains their workers. And now we say that we are going to have leadership training, leadership strategic congress at our world headquarters. And I don't see many of you showing interest. You are only showing interest in what you're going to make from McDonald's. What you're going to get from, uh, where do you work? Amen? Take time off. If you want to make that your vacation time, yes, spend part of it for the Lord. When there is defective leadership, the church will not grow. Thank you, you may have your seat. Amen? By the way, those of you standing up will see after the service. I don't want to embarrass you. So that you, you must go for that conference. Somebody say amen. amen. Great time to develop yourself. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, what does it say? Study to show yourself approved unto God. Approved unto God. Approved unto God. Amen? Amen? And then you need wisdom. It's still part of leadership training. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. With all thy getting, get wisdom and get understanding also. The church will not grow again if we are removing the ancient landmark. The ancient landmark. You know, today I'm just talking to you. I'm not preaching. Praise God. Amen? Amen. This is not my normal way of preaching. This is just exhorting one another. Remove not the ancient landmark which your father's have led. Proverbs 23, verse 10. At other times, because we are not exposed, we don't know how to handle people. I was in Singapore. It is a law firm. We're trying to handle the registration of the church in Singapore. Sorry, was this? No, not Singapore, Hong Kong. I've been to Singapore, but this is Hong Kong now. And the lawyer 
Just like what you saw today. This is real life experience. The atheist kind of a thing. And we're talking about church. And the lawyer said, uh, I'm sorry, I am an atheist. That was the first time I saw face to face. Amen. When you have exposure to things like what we did, death with today, it helps you, it prepares you, it equips you, so that when you encounter people like that, you know how to deal with them. You saw these students, the college students, some of them, they felt, the thoughts, the way they are living their life is the way to be happy. No, there is no joy in it. They are sad and sorrowful with it. That's why they keep on doing it so that they can, it's just like people that say, I don't feel happy. Get a, a bottle of uh, alcohol. When the effect of the alcohol is gone, what happened to him again? The sadness comes back. It's not the solution. But they don't want to show you that uh, they are going through it, so they want to talk boldly. Do you notice that the atheist was more aggressive than the, the, the minister? If we were to scold them, the atheist will pass. Amen? Don't you see the other one, the university students? After all, you have 3.5, I have 4.0. I mean, you, you kind of kill the spirit of the person right away. This is where exposure matters. Amen? Amen? Let's put our hands together for our resident pastor that came up with that. <laughs> this is real life experience. Exposure. Learn from other people. Don't just think, ah, the way you have been doing it, if it is the way you have been doing it, where is the result of it? Do something different. Tell somebody, do something, do something different. Amen. And then our location, please, our church here, make it clean all the time. Make it clean all the time. Don't ever leave trash on the floor. Don't bring water in and then leave the water bottle. Almost every time I come, there is bottle here and there. That is not right. Now, I have more to see on that when I get to larger people with different churches because uh, I go to some churches and then uh, their membership are just like 50 and then you have five different kinds of uh, chairs. The color, brown, red, blue. No coordination. Even the, and then when you come, you sit down, don't push the chairs. It took time for people to arrange them and make them look presentable. When you come to church, understand some people's time and effort is going into all of this. Help us to make the church of God look good. I need an amen. Amen. And don't bring fire. Some of the chairs will see their bones. Do you smoke secretly in the church? And don't allow your children to come with a chap object. You know, little children, not that they are wicked, but they want to explore. Hey, this, this chapter, let me try. And then they destroy the chair. I have seen some of those. So I'm not just talking. I'm talking from what is really happening. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yesterday we talked about our own dressing. Dress well. If you want people to embrace your Christ. Amen. She was showing me some pictures of some children in our church when they started coming you will see the, from 
low, low, low people, the way they came to church and all that. But after some time, always seeing their pastor, always seeing their pastor, always seeing their pastor, without telling them, I'm talking of little children now, and they started changing their dress. I need a better amen. amen. And then even the adults, I'm telling you, you see a grown-up woman, 40 year old, coming with uh, almost a uh, bikini to church. But now, somebody say, but now. But now. Without even telling them to buy skirts, some of them are wearing skirts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Be a good model. Be a good, I was sharing with them yesterday, two pastors from another church were to come and see me. Sorry, they were not coming to see me. They came to get something from our church. And they just dressed anyhow. And you remember, in the course of GCK, I've been to many churches, many cities, and they have listened to my ministrations and everything. I didn't know that even though they are pastors, that my, my messages was getting into them. Be an influencer. And so they came to our church, and all of a sudden they realized that I was inside the church. Well, then what did they do? They started hiding themselves. <laughs> and finally, I was told that they were turning back to go. So somebody told me, so I called them, I said, come back. So they said, Pastor, we are very sorry because of the way we dress. These are not even deeper life pastors now. From another church, I said, today you are forgiven, but go down and sin no more. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let others see Jesus in you. Amen. Amen. When you dress well, they will love your Jesus. You don't have to dress worldly. You don't have to dress worldly. Our sister here used to be very worldly. But then her worldly friends now are calling her. What has happened to you? And some of them will call her, can you please pray for me? Because they saw something different. People are watching you. People are watching us. Let your light so shine. Before the angels? Huh? Before God? Oh, before Jesus. Uh -uh. Let your light so shine before men that they may see and glorify your Father that is in heaven. Your conduct, your character, your behavior, your attitude, people are watching us every day. If we are going to be builders together with Christ, we must begin with ourselves and from ourselves in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If we're going to grow the church, we have to forget about our tradition, our culture. Let them become part of the church before they become part of the culture. Don't let culture or tradition be the number one thing. Let love be the number one thing. Let affection be the number one thing. How can this be done within the power of the Lord? Behold, I give unto you power. This sign shall follow them that believe. You have the power if you can pray. If you can take note of all these little, little things we are talking about, the church will grow. I said the church will grow. If we can get our young people more involved, the church will grow. Amen. And when you are getting them involved, understand they are still children. They are not as matured as you. So they will not be children twice in their lifetime. It's just one time. Amen? Amen. You know, this morning, as I was coming up, I saw one of our young people and uh, one of the workers in the church, praise God, alone by herself, daughter, amen, I thank God for your life, because she's hearing me, amen. 
and she's trying to practice some kind of dance. Praise God. And then as she looked up, she saw me. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. You think I'm going to say, hey, what kind of dance are you dancing? No. She's still a child. She's still growing. She's not going to pass through that stage twice. If at all I'm going to say anything, I'm going to say, Dora, I love that. Can you do it for me? Let me see again. <laughs> Amen. And I would try to, because I was hurrying up to, to the sanctuary here so I can be part of, I couldn't really do that. I would have said, I would say, do it again, let me see. I would have mimic. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Someone would say, Amen. Amen. Don't be too holy for God. Don't be too righteous than God. Amen. Amen. When you see people, don't just be a judge. Who has made you a judge? Embrace them. Even Jesus said, let the little children come unto me. Amen. You know, when I was much younger in the faith, God helped me that uh, almost from my time of conversion, I gave up many things. And so when I see some of these young people, I say, ah, but to say you are born again, but now I am matured. When I see some of them with their beards, amen? I don't complain about their beards anymore. You are hearing amen right there? <laughs> amen? I just go to them, and I even touch the beer. I say, I like this goatee. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then they, they, they will not do it as do it like this. <laughs> and we are keeping them in the church. In the time gone back, we would have driven them away from the church. So please, it's not everything you see that you complain about. Let the spirit of the Lord ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The part of the power of the Holy Spirit job is to help you know what to do, how to do it, when to do it. It's not just for you to do That is, that is not the issue. It is for you, and you will be my witnesses. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is for us to preach the gospel and bring souls to Christ Jesus. The power is there with us. If only we are ready to use it. Let us pray. Our church will not fail. Our church will grow. You are going to close your eyes and say, Lord, in whatsoever way, I have not done the right thing. I am sorry. In whatever way I have contributed to people not staying in the church, I repent in dust and ashes. In whatever way that my life has not preached the gospel, I repent in dust and ashes. In whatever way that I have not been a good example for all that to emulate, I repent in those sandwiches. In whatever way I have driven anybody away, consciously or unconsciously, Father, I am sorry. Create in me, O oh Lord, a new spirit, a new heart. And renew the right spirit within me. Make me a channel of blessing. Make me a channel of blessing. Make me a light that shines in the world.
judge nothing before the time. You are not in heaven yet, I'm not in heaven yet. Pray that God will use you to build this church. Help you to be patient with people, to persevere with people, to pray with people. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord to take away from you every limitation, every hindrance, every obstacle, even fear to take away from you. John Knox prayed, give me soul so else I die. Passion, passion for soul. Passion for soul will make you, help you, enable you to love people. Passionately accommodate people until Christ is formed in them. If you will pray today that, Lord, before the end of this year, give me a soul. And everybody here will pray for the same thing. By the end of the year, this place will be packed. Just one at a time. Just one at a time. You don't give up. One at a time. You don't quit. One at a time. We may try all the strategies, but without prayer, nothing will, is going to work. It is the love of Christ that wins people for God so loved the world. Students, young adults, daddies and mommies, you can do it. We can do it. We can do it. The apostles did it. We can do it. People that have gone before us, they did it. We can do it. Whatever sacrifice I need to make, Lord, help and give me the grace. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. That my life on daily basis will be a life of evangelism. Cry for soul, cry for soul, cry for soul. If death should come today, do you have any soul to present to the Lord? If the rapture should take place now, do you have any converts?
must I go and empty handed thus my dear redeemer meets not one day of service give him lay no trophy at his feet must I go and empty handed must I meet my savior so not one so with wish to greet him must I must I must I empty handed go In Jesus' name we pray. Must I go and empty hand thus my dear mammy not one day of service give him lay no trophy at his feet must I go and empty and then must my Savior so not one soul with which to breathe must I and go oh the yeah Again, for the last time. 